I wanted to make a short video of the process I go through when I'm adding oil to the South Bend 13 lathe. Uh, now the process is the same if you have a 9A, 9B, 9C, um, if you have a 14 and a half. Uh, the only one that's a little bit different is if you have a size uh, 16 inch, uh, which is just one extra place that you add under the, in the cabinet under the motor, in the motor mount. Uh, other than that, everything else is exactly the same. Um, and as you can see by the picture, I'm using the one gallon containers of the oil that I use. Uh, now there are smaller uh, sizes that you can get if you wanted to get the, I, I think it's like a 16 ounce and they'll sell you a kit of like four of the four different oils all in a 16 ounce bottle. Uh, but I, after, you know, searching, I found out that I could save anywhere between 60 and $80 if I ended up just getting the gallon size. And, you know, I'm going to be using this lace for a long time. So I figure why not invest in the bigger size? Um, and uh, you, you'll 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 re you'll quickly realize that you'll use the oil quite a bit. Maybe not the A and the B oil, but you will use the C and the whey oil quite a bit. And everything that I'm telling you now, you can get in the back of this uh, book. This is the book for the 9A, B, or C. And this is like if you want to restore the lathe, it gives you all the instructions for taking it apart, putting it together, all the oils and everything. So I can't take credit for this. Uh, uh, I believe the writers from uh, it's Ilion Industrial Services, and everything that I'm gonna tell you today will be in the back of that book. And in the back of the book, also it has a chart, in which this is the chart that I got here is from the South Bend 13 book. Uh, the one I just showed you was for the 9A. I couldn't find my 13, but this chart is from the back of the size uh, 13 inch book. And all I did was I made a copy of it, enlarged it, and then laminated it. That way I can have it um, by my side and I can use it. I don't have to worry about getting it dirty. Again, I got that in the back of the book. That's written by Ilion Industrial Services. Okay, so the first oil that we'll be talking about, um, which is described in the back of the book as Type A Spindle Oil or Mobile Number 10 Spindle Oil. And I'll have a link in the description where you can buy this oil and all the other oils, uh, as long with some other things that I'll be showing you on the video as well. There are only a few places where you'll need to add the Type A oil, and one of them will be in the spindle bearings located uh, in the back and in the front of the headstock in these little oil cups. Uh, just a few pumps will do, because uh, the more you add, the more will drain into the headstock, and it'll just create a mess later on. Now I'm in the cabinet where the motor and the comb pulley is at, and um, you'll need to oil the sleeve bearings, which you'll find one on the left and one on the right side, and this will need to be done uh, only once monthly. Usually the last place you'll add the A-type oil will be in the apron reservoir, and just like the spindle bearings, you won't be able to fill this up, so just add a couple of squirts uh, on a daily basis. Okay, so the next type of oil we'll be using is Type B oil or Mobile DTE24 Hydraulic Oil Light. The only place you'll be using the Type B oil is in the gearbox. This goes for the 9 inch A, B, and C and the 14 and a half inch. Now the 16 inch uh, will take some B oil in the gear reduction, which is in the motor cabinet. Okay, up next is the Type C oil or mobile DTE oil, heavy medium. Now this is the oil that you're gonna be pretty much using throughout the entire lathe. Uh, there are a lot of places and uh, we'll go over each place that you'll be using it. The first place you'll be using the C type oil will be in the reverse bracket. And you just need to add a couple of squirts daily. Okay, so the next place we'll be adding the type C oil well, some of you will. I, I personally do not like to add oil here because it kind of shoots out everywhere when you turn it on <laughs> the lathe. Um, I use something a little different. I actually got the idea from, I believe it was Halligan142. He's on YouTube. You should check his channel out. But he had the idea of using, I believe it's called Cling Rope Oil. I'll have a picture here coming up in a second. And it's kind of, it's a little bit thicker viscosity so it doesn't shoot everywhere. Uh, it really clings on to the gears, and I, I tend to use that more than the oil itself. The only place I do add a little bit of C-type oil is 
in this in the gears I have the little holes right here, right there where, where I'm showing you and uh, that go towards the spindle and in the hole in the front I just add a squirt on each one I also add a squirt or two of oil to the tension lever not too big of a deal you forget but you know it's good to you do it I also add some um, oil to the apron gears just a few squirts now you followed the book and did the restoration to your lathe it did ask for you to drill a small hole behind the hang wheel and that's so that you can get to oil the actual spindle there as well next up are the carriage dovetails now some people do use whey oil here um, but I like to stick with the book and, uh, and just use the C-type oil here uh, I don't think it would make too big of a deal if you, if you did use the whey oil it's a little bit thick but you know I'll leave that up to you uh, I personally I like using the type C oil on, uh, on the dovetails usually I'll just put some oil on and work uh, you know the, the cross feed or the cross feed you know uh, forward and back and let the oil kind of work its way in sometimes I'll put it on the front side as well and kind of work it in as well I also add some oil to the uh, feed dials and my feed dial is a little bit different um, than what you may have um, so on, on mine I, I can I can pull back the dials and add some oil in the gaps on the original south bins um, I think uh, if you turn the little knob to to lock it you can probably put a little oil in there um, for those of you wondering what these dials are I believe the brand is called new era um, if I happen to find them I'll add a link to the description as well and I usually just turn the, the handle um, you know to work the oil in but really what you're supposed to do is actually turn the knobs uh, I was turning the handles as you can see but uh, it would work way better if you actually turn the actual dials themselves some people add some oil to the half nuts only when they're gonna, going to be threading uh, but you know I I, I tend to do it every time I oil the rest of the lathe just so that I, I don't forget but that'll be totally up to you okay now usually when I add oil to the lead screw I, I like to have the lathe running so that it's turning while I'm adding oil and I'll run the carriage up and down the lead screw so that it kind of works its way in uh, but I didn't do it this time I add a couple of pumps of oil to the screw bracket. Now some of you may have a oil cup, some of you may just have a hole. If your thread dial has an oil button, uh, then you can just put some in there, just a couple of drops will do. The tail stock will also have one or two oil cups depending on your lathe. And I forgot to film uh, myself oiling the actual spindle itself. I also like to add oil to that while I'm turning the hand wheel. Adding oil to the feed screws is a little bit more interesting. You'll have uh, some screws that you'll have to uh, unscrew and add oil to it. Um, don't forget that the cross feed screw, the one I'm taking off now, uh, once you add oil and you screw the, the screw back in, make sure that the screw it's below the surface of the dovetail you don't want to leave it sticking out and when you you run in the, the you run the cross feed into it it causes a lot of damage uh, you won't have that issue with the compound uh, cross uh, uh, feed screw because there's nothing that's going to hit it up there but um, it's always, I always like to leave it below the surface as well because sometimes you'll put your hand on there or you know you may scratch yourself or scratch apart or anything like that so I, usually when I put these in I also will uh, put it below the surface and again I just add a couple of squirts of oil and I work the cross feed back and forward and back on the cross feed and the compound until I feel the oil has worked its way in okay the final place for the type C oil will be your spindle mount uh, this blade originally came with a threaded spindle uh, but I upgraded it and changed it to a D14 spindle and so I like to add oil you know where the actual um, chuck mounts to the spindle if you have a threaded spindle then um, you could add 
the same oil types of oil to the threads just so that your chug doesn't stick uh, the next time you use it. Okay, last but certainly not the least is whey oil or uh, mobile oil number two. And uh, there's only a few places you'll you'll need to put this oil, but you'll be using this oil a lot. Uh, you you want your waste to be protected, and um, the more oil you add, uh, it pushes out the old oil along with any debris that's on the waste. On my lathe, I believe when I got it, it already had these oil buttons here. I, I think I had to replace it for new ones because they broke when I was trying to clean them, you know, remove them and clean them. So they did have those buttons there. So you put a couple of squirts there. And then I also put them on the ways and then I'll work the carriage forward and back. Uh, so I'll put it in front of the carriage and work that in. And then I'll go to the back of the carriage as well and add some oil there, as you can see. I'll put it right on the ways on, on both sides. Also give a paper attachment. You can put it in front of that as well. And then just work that oil in. Um, you can't. You can never use too much whey oil. Whey oil. So the more the merrier. And I, uh, I, I like to use a lot of it just to make sure that it's gonna, it's going to protect the ways. I also do the tailstock, and I do the same as I do the carriage. I'll put the oil in front of the um, tailstock, and I'll slide it forward. And I usually do it in the back as well. I'll add some in the back, and I'll slide it back as well. Again, you can't use too much whey oil. As far as oiling the lathe, for me, for my setup, I'm pretty much done. Um, I will be talking about Super Lube, which is uh, a substitute that I use on my on my cone pulleys. On my cone pulley, it actually says grease on it. Um, I believe on some of the models, um, or even in the book, it says you can add oil or grease. Um, I use grease because you do it once a year and forget about it. One last little clean step that I like to do, uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys do this, but I like to clean out the spindle. And I have this rod here, that's, it's, it's actually called a trombone cleaning rod, it's for, for any of you music, musicians. Uh, you know what this is, this is a rod that you use and you put a rag on it just like that to clean the slides on your trombone. Uh, but it works great to clean out the spindle on your lathe. Um, as you can see, at the, the end of the, the rod has like a little loop. If it doesn't fit through your spindle, you can kind of crimp that down a little bit, you know, hit, hit it with a hammer or something, kind of smash it down a little bit so it fits your size spindle. And I always do this right before uh, I'm going to use my collet, my collets, because when I put the collet chuck spindle or the collet spindle in there, um, I don't want it to scratch my spindle. So, you know, overall, that's the process I go through. Again, uh, in the description, I will have a link to all the oils that you can use, uh, the felt kits if you want to restore your lathe, um, the different types of oil uh, sizes, the 16 ounce or the one gallon ounce, whichever one you want to purchase. I'll have a link to the trombone um cleaning rod so if you're interested in that you can get that as well and and, and maybe and the grease as well and maybe a few other things uh i might have forgotten to mention but again this is my way of cleaning my lathe and oiling my lathe i'm not by any means saying that this is the way of doing it or the correct way or the only way uh but i just you know it was time for me to add some oil and clean it up anyway so i thought i'd film it and uh, show you guys how I did it. Uh, either way, you know, uh, leave a comment down below um, uh, letting me know if you liked the video or if there was something you think I forgot or you think maybe I could add. Uh, maybe I can add it to the next video. Anyways, uh, um, thanks for stopping by and checking the video out. Uh, please comment, please subscribe, and support the channel. Thanks.